Imagine waking Imagine for a moment that you're watching a remote surgery unfold in real time. Except the patient is on another continent and you can see every blood vessel, every subtle tremor in perfect 3D. There's no lag, no buffering, just seamless, instantaneous interaction. It sounds like science fiction, yet it's precisely the kind of feat 6G promises to deliver. But while most of us are still marveling at what 5G has brought, there's a high-stakes race underway that could completely redraw the map of global connectivity. And Huawei is at its very heart. Back when 5G was just becoming a household name, Huawei quietly shifted its gaze to the next frontier. Even as Western regulators barred the company from key markets, citing security concerns and effectively trying to choke off its growth, Huawei doubled down on research. By 2017, well before most telecom giants even had their 5G strategy in place, the company was already funneling huge resources into theoretical 6G models. And by late 2020, long before the world had finished installing 5G infrastructure, China launched its first experimental 6G satellite, sending terahertz signals from orbit to test the feasibility of speeds 100 times faster than anything we've seen so far. To appreciate why this matters, consider the challenges that shaped the 5G era. Rolling out faster networks was as much a political saga as it was a technological one. Governments wielded approvals like swords, and without access to Western allies' supply chains, many companies found themselves boxed out. Huawei, despite its engineering prowess, faced bans in Europe, North America, and parts of Asia, all in the name of national security. Many analysts concluded that no amount of innovation could overcome the lack of Western endorsement. Yet Huawei's response wasn't retreat, it was a pivot to self-reliance, a move that now looks like a masterstroke. What makes 6G fundamentally different isn't just raw speed. We're talking about terabit per second data rates, end-to-end -end latency measured in microseconds, and networks so smart they can reconfigure themselves in real time. Picture a fully immersive augmented reality concert attended by millions, each audience member seeing the event from a unique angle or an autonomous drone fleet coordinating disaster relief without a single dropped packet. These aren't far off dreams. They're the very use cases driving today's 6G prototypes. Yet the real linchpin of this future is advanced semiconductors. For years, the most cutting edge chips have depended on extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. Tools so complex and so controlled that only a handful of Western companies can produce them. China's foundries were effectively cut off from these machines by export controls, leading many to believe that without EUV, Chinese chipmakers would remain stuck several generations behind. But what you might not know is that China's leading semiconductor foundry, SMIC, has quietly perfected a 2 nanometer gate all-around transistor process using only deep ultraviolet lithography. This breakthrough shatters the assumption that EUV is the only path to the most advanced nodes. The implications of this are staggering. If SMIC can produce chips at the bleeding edge without EUV, then Huawei, SMIC's largest customer, can design and deploy processors powerful enough to drive AI-native 6G networks, all without Western approval or supply chain access. Overnight, the strategic leverage that Western nations thought they held has evaporated. Suddenly, the narrative shifts from Huawei is at the mercy of export controls to Huawei has unlocked an independent route to the future. Still, innovation on paper doesn't always translate to real-world impact. That's why Huawei's research goes far beyond theoretical white papers. Inside their R&D centers in Shenzhen, teams of engineers and data scientists run thousands of network simulations daily. They're not just testing throughput, they're stress-testing entire ecosystems. Everything from self-healing cell towers that reroute traffic around power failures to intelligent base stations that predict peak demand periods and preemptively adjust resource allocations. These aren't incremental tweaks. They're a wholesale rethinking of how wireless networks operate. At the same time, Huawei has been forging alliances with academic institutions and national labs across China. Their partners are developing integrated sensing and communication modules that allow every 6G device to double as an environmental sensor. Imagine your smartphone picking up subtle vibrations in a nearby bridge, alerting civil engineers to structural fatigue long before any cracks appear. It's a fusion of IoT, big data, and AI that promises to build a digital twin of our physical world. One that's updated in real time and accessible from anywhere. But breakthroughs of this scale always come with risks. When networks become that intelligent, when they can anticipate your movements, predict your needs, and even infer your emotional state, 
the potential for privacy abuse balloons. It's easy to imagine a future where every interaction is logged, every preference tracked, and every personal decision influenced by unseen algorithms. Huawei's vision for an AI-native network raises questions about where data sovereignty ends and surveillance begins. Even more, if two incompatible 6G ecosystems emerge, one governed by Western data privacy norms, the other by China's state-driven model, global interoperability could fracture, leaving billions of devices stranded in the digital no-man's land between them. Economically, the stakes couldn't be higher. Industry forecasts estimate that the value of the 6G-enabled market, covering everything from autonomous vehicles to immersive telepresence, could top $13 trillion by 2035. If Huawei's independent 6G strategy succeeds, it stands to capture a significant share of that market. Conversely, Western companies may need to scramble to build new fabs, secure domestic supply chains, and rewrite their technology playbooks. Europe and the US have already announced plans to pour tens of billions into local chip manufacturing. What seemed like forward-thinking industrial policy now feels like a desperate response to a strategic surprise. Even more intriguing is what this means for the geopolitical landscape. For decades, technological standards have been a form of soft power. Whoever sets the rules for cellular networks, from GSM in the 1990s to 5G today, wins influence in global markets, in global trade negotiations, and ultimately in global politics. If China and Huawei can cement their own 6G framework, complete with homegrown chipsets, proprietary AI optimizations, and a nationalized data governance model, they'll effectively create a parallel digital sphere. Countries aligning with that sphere might gain access to advanced infrastructure at lower cost, but at the expense of deeper integration with Western-led ecosystems. It's a strategic gamble that could redraw the map of alliances in everything from digital trade to military communications. Of course, Western governments aren't sitting still. In parallel with funding new fabs, they're doubling down on open source network initiatives and pushing for more stringent data privacy safeguards in 6G standards bodies. The battle for the International Telecommunication Union's working groups has already intensified, with each side lobbying for language that favors their architecture. AI native versus cloud native, centralized orchestration versus distributed edge-first processing. The standards documents may read like dry legalese, but the outcome will dictate which companies win contracts for smart cities, autonomous logistics, and next-generation mobile broadband. Amid all this, Huawei's public messaging has been remarkably consistent. Innovation under pressure, they call it. The company has released periodic white papers outlining their vision for a secure, AI-driven network that balances performance with resilience. Yet for all their optimism, few outside China have seen the full scale of their prototype deployments. That begins to change this year, as Huawei plans limited commercial trials in partner cities across Asia and Africa, where regulatory barriers are lower and demand for connectivity solutions is sky-high. These field trials will test not just speed and latency, but real-world use cases. Emergency response coordination, remote manufacturing supervision, and large-scale environmental monitoring. Perhaps the most compelling glimpse of what's coming can be seen in a recent demonstration in Guangzhou. There, Huawei engineers showcased a live holographic collaboration between street-level cameras, autonomous vehicles, and a remote control center hundreds of miles away. The entire loop, from sensing to inference to actuation, completed in under 50 microseconds. It wasn't just a flashy demo. It was proof that terahertz links and AI orchestration can sync up multiple network layers in real time. And critically, all the processing happened on chips manufactured in China, using DUV lithography, sidestepping any Western technology blockade. Still, for viewers and decision makers watching from afar, the unanswered question remains. Will this Chinese-led 6G ecosystem be an isolated island, or will it merge back into a global network tapestry? Some experts argue that economic incentives will eventually force compatibility, just as 3G and 4G systems converge despite early fragmentation. Others warn that the sheer complexity of AI-native architectures, combined with divergent security protocols, could make seamless integration impossible. In either scenario, the notion of a single universally accessible network is fading.